Dit is de AR-15. Misschien wel de populairste wapen in Amerika. A lot of school shootings do happen with a, an AR. Yes. Actually, almost all of them. Hoe kan het dat bij alle massabeschietingen in Amerika steeds dezelfde wapen werd gebruikt? The reason it's effective for mass shooters is the same reason it's effective for an 80-year-old grandma to defend her own home. Vandaag onderzoek ik de populariteit van de AR-15. This platform is awesome. I'm good, how are you? I'm Danny. Ursula, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. Absolute pleasure. You brought all your toys with you? I did. Got some uh, iron ear protection and everything What? is going to be safe and fun. Wow, what's that? Uh, looks like you're doing some rifle work. I look at ARs and other gun parts like bras. Like, there's no one bra for everything. Like, girls have, like, party bras, work bras, sports bras. So, this particular one is what we call an AR pistol. And AR stands for Armalot Rifle. Like you'll hear in the media, we're like, oh, it stands for automatic. No, it's not automatic. These are semi-automatic, which means every time you press the trigger, only one round fires. So this right here is actually my main competition rifle. I also compete with this one as well wow. in a different division. This is the one I was shooting last night. This is a full blown rabbit hole because once you like actually figure out like, man, I'm actually kind of good at shooting things. This is great. There's a competition for it, even better. All right, let me see where I stack up against everybody else around different backgrounds and things like that. And the one thing that we all have in common is that we have access to these guns where we can do all the things. How? We have access. We can actually go buy guns. So. And what do you need to what do you need to buy an AR or another different? Um, money is a good start. Um, <laughs> And then, like, no felonies and things like that don't make you a prohibited possessor. I would definitely say we have about as many gun stores as liquor stores, but not as many as churches. Holy shit. They, they weren't ready for oh, that. Oh, sorry. No, 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 no. <laughs> You should have seen me. I was like, I was yeah. just running away. I think I'm running. Jesus Christ. So you can feel the impact all the way here. So, yeah, the percussion. So, ah. percussion is because I don't have the suppressor on it, it does make a difference. Whew. Oh, good. All three of those shots went into the neck. Oh, wow. Yeah. This is my first time shooting. And an AR, and exactly. Yeah, <laughs> this is great. How, how is that possible? What do you mean? Because this platform is awesome. American ingenuity. Wow, this is like James Bond stuff, you know? <laughs> <laughs> so that gun was made for shooting longer, longer ranges. Good, nice, nice. Good job. One more time. Anybody can do it. Anybody Absolutely do it. anybody can do this. There's even a guy here in America that shoots with no hands. Yeah, he was actually born with deformities and he shoots. Yep. I've been a shooter most of my life. I grew up in the country with my dad and my grandpa, uh, so I was introduced to shooting at a very early age. Um, but I would say primarily uh, once I was in the military. So I went into the United States Army in 2009, and I got out in 2017. So this is a, this is a firearm shop? Yes. But these, most of these stuff are also yours, right? Uh, yes, so most of the rifles that are out right now for display are a personal collection between the owner, myself, um, Alex, and Dom. And were you in the Army as well? Yes, I was. I did uh, six years. Um, I was an airborne paratrooper as well, so I jumped out of airplanes. It was, uh, it was fun. And then I met Jacob uh, in Germany right before we deployed to uh, Afghanistan, so. We're in Virginia now, right? Yes. Are you guys carrying? 
Uh, not right now, because we put it all <laughs> out on the table. Yeah, yeah it's, on the, it's on the table, but yes. But you do I carry? Anyway. Yes. You are? Yes. So you always have it with you? Yes. Uh, I mostly uh, prioritize carrying, especially if I'm with my wife, uh, because I am, I'm her protector, right? I, I am trusted by her and her family to be her protector, right? So I want to have the best instrument that I can possess to do my job effectively. It's not a fear that I think something bad is gonna happen to me every day. It's just an acceptance that malevolence exists in the world. So if it exists, and like Dom said, my responsibility is to be a provider and a defender of my family, I have to be able to act to handle those violent situations in an immediate right now kind of solution. So carrying a firearm every day allows me that ability. A lot of school shootings do happen with a, an yes. AR. Actually, almost all of them. Why do they always choose the AR-15 and start shooting? Mainly because they're being told that it's the best option. If you have a limited understanding of firearms and you know that you want to get one, especially you want to get one for a bad purpose, you have been told that this is the most dangerous, most lethal thing out there. It's in video games, it's in movies, it's what you believe is the best option. The biggest thing that an AR-15 excels at is that it's very shootable and can be easily used by a wide variety of people. So the reason it's effective for mass shooters is the same reason it's effective for an 80-year-old grandma to defend her own home, because it's easy to use. I think many people in the Netherlands are like, why would you even want to carry a gun with you the whole sure. time? So I, one, of the biggest, one of the biggest reasons that I carry a pistol, uh, and specifically a very large pistol like this, versus things like this that are very, very small. Yep. I carry this almost solely for the event of an active shooter. If I know that this is my threat, then I want to carry something that can counter that threat. And ideally, I would carry an AR with me, but I, you know, I can't shove that in my pants. So we go with the pistol. Hi, welcome to Patriot Ordnance Factory, where we build the ultimate fighting machines. We compromise on nothing. We only put the best materials Best hey. Hi, Corey. Hello, everybody. How's it going? Good to see you. Good to see you, too. Hi, Good I'm Danny. Nice Corey. to meet you. Yeah. Nice to meet you. Well, welcome. Thanks for coming to Patreon. Yeah. Here in Phoenix, Arizona. So these are AR-15 that you develop here and produce here as well? Correct. We build them here, here in-house. Um, we've got a manufacturing side and a production side, both here, here at our, our facility here in Phoenix. So what makes the AR-15 AR so popular in the United States? Well, as you can attest to, I mean, there's just so much you can do with them and you, mm -hmm. can, make, you can really personalize it to whether it's color, whether it's um, different features, trigger pulls. There's so many different things that you can do with an AR platform. Your AR is going to be in two main pieces. Your lower receiver is going to be the one part that's actually going to be considered the firearm. It's mm -hmm. the only part that's serialized. You can actually change out your trigger. And you just drop it right in. <laughs> and then you take your screws and you secure it in place. There's so many different grips, different angles, different thickness, textures. all that stuff, textures. And you put your pinholes together, and it becomes a rifle just like oh, wow. a rifle or this a pistol or an SBR, just like is just on like there. That one. It's like a Lego. Yeah. Pretty much. Yep. Pretty much. There's a lot of people, they will go out and spend, you know, $3,000 on this rifle, right? And they'll be like, I don't like that trigger. Great. And they'll spend another 300 bucks on a new trigger. You know what? I don't like that selector switch. Ah, you know what? I'll get a new one. It's like a hundred bucks right there, depending on the company. I don't like that grip angle. No, it's a little bit too thin. I want someone with a fatter palm swell. So like they can fit this to them, their lifestyles. Am I talking to somebody who does that? Yes, Cause you, you are. Know. Exactly. Because I, I do. Because yeah, yeah. <laughs> I've done it. Where it's like, all right, cool. I have this great blank canvas and now I got to make it for me. Unfortunately, it's also been used in many school shootings and many shootings. Uh, does that bother you that, uh, you know, it's always brought up in the news, like the AR-15, we should ban it. It's, it's, it's a weapon that is used or killing a lot of people. It's, it's one of those things where it's like nobody's willing to have the tough conversation of the person. Hmm. Like, it's not law-abiding citizens that's out there doing this stuff. These are your people with mental illness and all these other issues that nobody wants to talk about that because they feel like, oh, you're just going to hurt their feelings. Well, you're hurting my feelings when you want to take something away from me and I've done nothing wrong. Nobody started banning cars when we started having more DUIs on the road, more drunk drivers killing people. Not one person like, oh, my God, Honda must stop. You know, nobody said that. 
So same thing with like, you know, spoons making people fat. Like refrigerators are way too big for, for people, in my opinion. But I'm not out there trying to take people refrigerator rights. Not everybody needs a, a 10 or maybe a, excuse me, a, probably a 1200 cubic centimeter refrigerator. I think everybody should have mini fridges, keep less food so they won't get fat. Same thing. If you were to remove all guns and all people were back onto a level playing field where it was just knives and sticks and rocks, the person that wants to harm me is still gonna pick a rock up. So for me to defend myself, I've gotta carry a rock. These are just the world that we live in now, this is my rock. And I mean, where we live, there's no violent crime. But I still carry a firearm every day, I still carry basic medical supplies. Sometimes this rides in my truck with me as something I could get into. But statistically, the chances of me being inside of an active shooter environment are incredibly low. The chances of being in one and being able to respond with my gun, even lower. But should it arise, I would much rather be able to trade my life in that environment to protect other people versus stand in the parking lot and listen to it happen. So some people say school shootings, you know what you should do? You should arm the teachers because if somebody comes in... <laughs> sure, I argue against that. Um, I think the things that make you a good teacher would make you a bad gunfighter. And the things that make you a good gunfighter would make you a bad teacher. So expecting someone to be able to balance those two worlds, those two emotional reactions to an environment, impossible. We could absolutely do a better job of having people in those environments that could respond, but arming the teachers is a terrible idea. It's like asking a doctor to also fight you. But shouldn't there be um, at least a way of trying to stop stopping these people? I think that it, you have to look at it as a bigger societal problem. If you look at every mass shooter across the board, the one thing that's missing in their life is a family unit. They're all estranged from their family, come from broken families in some way. So it's, it's not necessarily removing the tool, but fixing the mentality that creates someone that wants to use the tool. I am a parent, I have a 12 year old daughter. She goes to the school right down the street. I, I have genuine concern and worry about active shooters. It's something that's on my mind. It's a reason I carry a very specific set of equipment in my truck in the event that that happens because I can get there quicker than local law enforcement could, which is a, that's a different conversation to go down. But if we were to say that to prevent school shootings that we get rid of anything that can carry lots of ammo or anything that's semi-auto, the road that you go down, the window that you would then open up is it destroys the Second Amendment and the purpose behind the Second Amendment. For a democracy like the United States to exist, for free people to exist, they have to be able to tell the government that they disagree with it. So you have to have a First Amendment. If you don't have teeth to defend that First Amendment, then you don't have a First Amendment anymore. And although these get used in extremely awful, evil ways, they still stand to guard that First Amendment. They guard the freedom of press. They guard the freedom of religion. If you lose the Second Amendment, you lose the entire Constitution. You lose the framework that makes American exceptionalism so exceptional. We don't have the Second Amendment in the Netherlands. So sure. Nobody's around, allowed to carry weapons. And people that disagree with the governments, they hit the street and they demonstrate and hope sure. to achieve something with that. So has the Netherlands government ever done the amount of awful atrocities that the United States government has done? From the 1800s through the Dole Company overthrowing most of South America over the banana trade to all of our activities in the Middle East to the fact that we used to own 13% of our population. We're owned people that were only three-fifths of a person. The United States government is not the friend of the people. It has never been the friend of the people. And for people to have a relationship with that government that keeps it from trampling them, the Second Amendment is what does it.